2008 graduate of EMU myself, I learned one thing about us eagles. We like to spread our wings and fly. That was cheesy. That was that, good. Real cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> Got them. Hooked them in. So as a risk taker myself, I said, why not? I'm going to pursue my dream, and I'm going to start my own company my last semester in college here at EMU, which was in uh, 06. And uh, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew what my dream was. What I didn't know was, who could I start this business with? Who could help me? And then I thought of someone. And uh, lucky for me, I actually got the phone call. Uh, unlucky for me, I got the phone call. <laughs> and uh, back in, let's see here, it was January of 2008, uh, we started our company. And from the, the second we started, it was basically 70 hours a week, wearing five hats, uh, doing whatever it takes as an entrepreneur to, to make your business run efficiently. So um, it was very difficult when we got going uh, that we're doing all these things. It's like, well, what do you do? Having to describe to people and explain to somebody, like, what do you do with your business? It's like, okay, well, my email signature says uh, I'm the VP of marketing. Meanwhile, there's only two people that yeah. work. So <laughs> VP of VP. what was kind of, kind of always weird. And, uh, and I'm also the guy who's responsible for taking out the garbage. <laughs> uh, I'm the internal IT department. Um, Don't forget human resources. Hum human resources. Uh, I, got, I had to go see human resources a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you got in trouble a lot, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, when we, we kind of got things going, we got things rolling, it was, it was really difficult for us to actually just kind of explain the whole vibe of, of what we were doing. And um, in 2010, we went to a conference called Future Midwest uh, in Detroit, which was a great experience for us. And we saw these guys speak. Um, from North Dakota, their Nine Clouds is the name of their company. They're actual brothers, and you couldn't tell them. Yeah, you couldn't kinda tell like at all. Us. I mean, they were they're very they're kind of kind of like us, you know. Like I'm good looking, eh, not, not so much. Uh, you so know, I have to go see HR a lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Verbal abuse, and uh, you know, they were just they they complimented each other very well, and and they were. They had a lot, we really respected them, and they had a lot of good th things going on with them. And so they had this thing, they called themselves the Bro Founders. And we just were like, that's perfect. That's exactly what describes our company, describes us. And it, it takes all the titles away from like, you know, CEO. CEO of what? You're like, yeah. you're like one person company. So it was just kind of silly. And, uh, you know, when you find a good idea and you're an entrepreneur, what do you do? You copy it. So we stole it. We ran with it. Take that. Um, that's, if you get anything away from this presentation, that's what you should take yeah. away from it. Just so we even it. told the guys, we're like, look, we love it. Um, you know, we're going we're gonna to jump on the bro, bro founder train. And uh, we just found something that described our friendship and our business relationship perfectly. And we call them relationships. And more cheesiness, more corniness, but we spell it R-E-A-L. Because a relationship is so much more than just what, you know, uh, what you think from a relationship, and Bro Founder really embodies that. Um, now, most professionals advise against starting a business with your friend, but we feel that um, it's, make, it's made us better entrepreneurs, better business people, and uh, better people overall for it. Yeah, and so we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of our recipes and kind of some things that, that goes into making a Bro Founder and creating these relationships, uh, managing these relationships, and then building upon them. Um, but a little bit more about, I guess, the, the bro founders and, and kind, of, kind of what that means. Have I ever introduced you as, oh, this is my bro founder, Bilal, over here. Ladies and gentlemen, give it, give it, up, for, give it up for Bilal, right? I am a fan of alliteration, though, so I think we should start using <laughs> bro founder Bilal a we lot more. We probably should. But it, it, it's, it's so much more than that. You know, as, as a business partner um, and as, you know, one of my best friends, uh, he's also someone that I have to share a bank account with. Um, I have to basically trust with everything that I do that, you know, he's not going on trips and buying bottles at the, the club, which, eh, it happens. Yeah. Um, but he's also Uncle B. So my, I have a little, little girl, her name's Harper, and, you know, this is Uncle B. And, uh, you know, as, as one of my best friends, he's also got a tight shoe game, if you can pay attention to that. And, uh, you know, Tim's so much more than my co-pilot to our business venture. Uh, he's my college classmate. He's one of my best friends. I had to say that because he said it. Um, but, true. you know, it's true. You can be like this. This is what Bro Founders is right there. And uh, more than anything, I mean, east of the Mississippi, you're not going to find a better beard than this one right here. So true. that kind of sealed the deal for Thanks, me. Man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, uh, and, and Bilal's also a risk taker. I like to be safe behind the podium here where you guys, I'm protected. Um, but let's, let's get into, into what, you know, creating these relationships and, and kind of outlining some of the things that we're going to talk about today is, um, you know, deflating your ego. Bilal's going to talk about being a chameleon. That's one of his favorite anecdotes. Um, we're going to talk about being selfless without being selfish, which is extremely hard to say, especially in an environment like this, so... Good luck to me later for that. And uh, we're also going to talk about just being a real better person. Now, deflating your ego, I know it probably sounds uh, probably straightforward now. I like to tell everyone a little bit story. Um, I like to talk a lot. That's why Tim doesn't like being on stage with me. Um, it's true. But, you know, I like gifts. I don't know about you guys. I love gifts, especially when they're, like, free. Um, so when we started our company, I got a gift, and I'm like, awesome, I love gifts. It was a needle. I had no clue what this person was doing. I'm like, awesome. I didn't want to offend them, but I'm like, what's this needle for? And all they replied was, you'll know when it's time. I'm like, I don't know if this is some Jedi mind trick thing I'm supposed to know. Just but way over my head, I'm like, awesome needle, cool. So in 2009, company started hitting some, uh, some bumps, some rocky points, and we had to do what we had to do, and we picked up a night shift. So Tim and I worked at a restaurant. I washed dishes. He was a server. We left the office. In the face. I got the face for a server. Yeah. I, you see yeah, the difference yeah. there. I was in the kitchen. All right. Um, and uh, it was literally, I mean, months went by, and we, we had to grind it out, leaving the office 5, 5.30, straight 6 to midnight, washing dishes, which I'd like to say... I think I was the wash, dishwasher of the year in 2010. Definitely. It's like unofficial, but Google it, it might be there tonight. Um, <laughs> so it was the last day I'm in the kitchen and I'm, I'm literally just like light bulb. The needle is to deflate my ego. And it wasn't only a, a reminder of humility and no matter what we do in life, who we meet or the progress and success we find, but we always have to remember that our ego is sometimes our biggest obstacle. So right then at that moment, I knew the ego wasn't going to get in my way anymore and nothing could stop us from this point forward. So being a chameleon, yes, uh, I, I don't know what got into me when I came up with this, but um, I, I just think that you need to be aware of your surroundings. You need to be able to adapt to certain situations. And for me, um, I have another great story that I want to share with you guys that really embodies that message. Please tell so, us. Yeah. We're, we're anticipating. We've got enough wait. time left where you have 30 seconds at the end. <laughs> so it's down to 25 because they're laughing a lot. Stand here. So um, we work a lot of events between sports and entertainment, and I'm working an event. We have a customer come up, very unhappy. I'm driving around my broke golf cart. I'm sweating. I'm a mess. And I just know, you know, this person's unhappy. I'm going to take care of them and do whatever I can. I literally get their tickets sent to the, the will call. I drive them to a parking spot. I spend 30 minutes while this gentleman's girlfriend makes her hair. Um, and I have to drive them back to the main entrance in a two-person golf cart. And there's two of them. And there's me. So I'm hanging off the golf cart. We've got both of them inside. I got it done. I literally don't have, I just kind of blacked out. And as the gentleman gets up, he says, Bilal, I want to say thank you so much for everything you've done today. Give me a call tomorrow. I'm driving away, I look at the card, uh, CEO of Little, Little Caesars Pizza Bowl, which within the next 30 days we signed our next contract with them. So I think that, that's a constant reminder that you never know who you're going to be interacting with. You need to be able to adapt to different situations and different surroundings. The other thing I always say is like, I'm not a suit and tie guy, it doesn't really do well for me, I'm more jeans and tee. Unfortunately, I can't always wear jeans and t-shirts, so I have to, you know, dress up in a suit. Now, it, do, it, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily change who I, how I act when I dress, but it's knowing my surroundings gives me the ability to lead a meeting with my staff or sit in the background when I have to go meet with a group of CEOs and have no clue what they're talking about. So being a chameleon, real important to me. And adapt on the fly, enough cheesiness for me. This guy has more puns than anyone in the world. And I knew you just, I'm looking at that. I'm like, I didn't put that on a slide. Adapt on a fly, yeah. It's because of the chameleon. And yeah, you know, like, horrible joke. It's a, it's a fly. Horrible joke. I thought it was pretty good. And when, when, when Bilal was in the golf cart, I was actually just eating pizza and hanging out with people. So I was, yeah. I was literally doing nothing. So thanks. Yeah. Thanks for that. That was good. You're welcome. That was really good. And that's... Classic bro founder example, right? Like you can always depend on someone else, which is which is kind of nice. Like all the time. Like all the time, yeah. 
Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about being selfless um, without being selfish. Uh, and not only is that Nailed hard it. to say. It's Nailed it. Yeah, thanks. Nailed man. it. Knew it. Uh, it's also really hard to do. Um, and it's something that I, I personally struggle with a lot because when you go out of your way to do things for other people, uh, it, internally it makes you feel good. And so kind of like not making that be the, the end goal uh, is, really, is really difficult, something I struggle with because I like to make myself feel good. It feels good. Um, but the first thing that I always do is you got check the intentions. Like whenever we're embarking on a new relationship or um, you know, I'm meeting someone for coffee, uh, the end result just needs to be I need to help this person. And that should be my intention going into every conversation, every relationship that you have is my whole goal is trying to figure out all right, how am I going to be able to help this person. And it's not because I'm going to get something out of it. It's just literally because that's what you should do is help other people. That's what he says now. <laughs> now. Yeah. Yeah, wait till he asks for your business card afterwards. Right. Uh, and, you know, there's just a lot of things that, that go into that when, when you're helping out other people. Uh, it, makes, it makes it easier to be a better person, which is the next thing that, uh, and really the last point that, that I want to talk about is being a real better person. Uh, and everything that we're talking is, is actually fairly easy to do, but it's, it's easy to say, but it's not easy to do. Like I just screwed that up. Yeah. It was okay. Good recovery. Yep, that was good. Uh, so I mentioned earlier I have, a, I have a little girl. Her name is Harper. She's 20 months old. Uh, she's recently learned the word no. Um, I taught her that. Yeah, she says it, <laughs> she says it a lot. Like so do I. everything. <laughs> um, but it's funny because I'm, I'm teaching her things. You know, Harper, we say please. You know, Harper, we say thank you. Uh, we're not going to share, or we're going to share our stuff. We're not going to, you know, say no and, and try to attack another little kid who's playing with your toy. Um, and in, in, the, in the same aspect, when, you know, we're in, in, in the business setting, uh, we forget that for some reason. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what along the lines of being a, a two-year-old to being, you know, 20 or, or 30, we forget these principles of, of being a kid, of being a child and learning to say please and say thank you. Um, and we don't hit. That's another thing she struggles with. It's hitting. <laughs> A 20-month-old baby should not be hitting, but between you and I, I don't know, sometimes I just want to kind of push you down the stairs. Yeah, so, yeah. You know. but, but we don't hit. We so, don't, yeah, we don't. So that's, uh, you know, <laughs> good to know. And uh, we, we work a lot in, in the digital space, so we're on Twitter, on Facebook, and, and doing a lot of stuff online, and this is where I see, like, the biggest discrepancy of, of this, this whole notion of uh, saying please, saying thank you, or in being a real person, is that I have friends that I know that they have like multiple Twitter accounts because they don't want their employer to know what they really think about something or they don't want the, their parents to see a post on Facebook so they have this, this thing, you know, this privacy setting set up. And I just don't understand that because at the end of the day, you shouldn't be saying that thing. Like if you don't want somebody to know that that's what you're really like, you should be striving to be a better person. And that's um, as easy as that is to, to say. It's, it's a really difficult thing to do, but I just think that that's... And that's, that's, that takes us into these five key points here. Uh, it is a lot easier to say than to do. But if I can leave with one, or if I can send you off with one thing, less talk, more action. Because I, I think you guys found out, I don't really talk a lot. I'm more of an action guy. I don't like right. talking. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's pretty much the rule that HR handed down to me, less talk, more action. Keep it with you. It's, it's seriously like a life motto of mine because it's a constant battle that I have to deal with. And I want to keep talking and mumbling. And yeah, keep and, now, and now we're hand gestures. Yeah. So it's just getting awkward yeah. now. Okay. Um, and it's a, it's, this is, what we're, what we're explaining as far as like relationships is, is not a, like a sales technique, it's not like a sales tip, it's actually a lifestyle change. Um, I'm a vegetarian, for all of you who don't know, um, and I don't eat meat. So I, I think that, <laughs> I think that, uh, write that down. Yeah, get that, get that going. Um, but it, it, it's like a diet, right? I don't, I don't understand diets. You just have to change your lifestyle to, um, and this is one of those things that fits, fits well in with that. And um, this blinking clock over here is freaking me out. Um, so, you know, you have to push yourself to be a better listener as well. And that's something that I struggle with all the time because he talks so much, I just tune him out. Um, but uh, being a better listener is really important. It's something that I learned actually here um, during my undergrad at EMU, during the communication class, being an active listener and not thinking about what, oh, I got to say this, I got to interject here, and I, I want to you know, make this point, but just stop that and actually listen to what the other person is trying to tell you. Don't fake it like I did today. Um, 
Don't do that. All right, I got some laughs. Um, yeah, don't fake it. Be real. Be as real as you can. And I, I think caring about the relationship you make is the most important. And if you do that, I think within each one of you, you'll find there's a little bit of bro founder right here. That's it. Thanks. <laughs>